All right, we're talking about the victory program. We've already spoken about we're in this to win it. Anything that we, we are involved in, we are there to win. Okay? If you're not at the stage of your journey yet where you have desire to beat whatever you're going through or you don't think you can, I can't help you. This is for those that want to win. For all you warriors that want to be awesome again, that want to have value and identity again in your life, you need to pay attention to this. For those of you that are supporting veterans and all these other organizations, you need to understand this concept because you're going to hear this shout from the rooftops very, very shortly. It's not going to be for everyone. It's going to be for those that want to win. Post-traumatic stress disorder is not a disorder. You're not alone. You're not crazy. You can beat it. All right? We're about victory. We're warriors. We won the war, for goodness sake. So the Victory Program is an acronym. We'll give you the first two now without giving too much away and blowing your mind. We've already blown a few minds in regards to putting out the world's first good news book about post-traumatic stress disorder. And through that, I see all of this people clinging to value and identity from the old time. Okay? So, value and identity, where did we get that from? We had value because we had a mission. We had a purpose. I had a role to fulfill on this planet. My role was to seek out and close with the enemy, to kill or to capture them, to seize them to hold ground, to repel attack by day or night, regardless of weather, season or terrain. That was my role. That was my value to my community, my country, myself, my teammates. Do they see that value in us now? Do we see it in ourselves? Hard to when you're not in there anymore because of our identity. The closest thing that's linked to our heart is our love for our brothers and our sisters within our tribe, within our unit. Yeah, it's our family, man. My tribe, Nati Tumatawinga, God of War, the New Zealand Army. That was my tribe. That gave me my identity, my pride, who I was. And I had a mission that provided value. Yeah, it was seen that way. My heart goes out to the Vietnam veterans that had this. And they come home and they got shat on, spat on. Told that, that they had no value because of their identity. Yeah? Now we're flipping that all around we'll beat this. So we can understand when you're part of this tribe, you know your identity, you have value because you have a mission, that when you leave everything gets tough. And we talk transition training and CVs and you can't change this identity on a CV. You can't change this identity with how you dress. You can't change this identity by going on a course and getting qualifications. Because our identity is what we think we are on the inside. One of the first questions counsellors and psychs should always ask, in my humble opinion, I have no psych qualifications, just calm yourself down a little bit, is this. What do you see as your core identity? My core identity is always going to be that of a soldier from a military background. I joined the police, loved it, loved that tribe. As an ex-military police officer, I can't be just a normal police officer. Because I come from another tribe as well. And I also belong to another uh, group of tribes outside of the military background. Yeah? The management tribe, the leadership tribe, the corporate tribe, the commercial tribe, the entrepreneur tribe, the businessman tribe. I've gone into all of those tribes and learnt their languages, learnt the culture, learnt some of their skill sets to bring back to put into this program so we can get back out there and help our people in our language. And the first thing I did was attack PTSD, our greatest threat that's killing more of us than anyone else. Military related suicide, PTSD is a huge part of that. So we attacked that first. Why? Because we want to win. I don't want to cope. I don't want to survive. I want to win. All right? So when we're in the military, it's like Club Awesome. I know who I am. I know what my purpose is. I have value. I have an identity. Yep. When I leave that, if I go to somewhere that doesn't have the similar components, I don't feel like I belong to that tribe. You know, I can sit in a corporate boardroom now. I've presented to Harvard level uh, educated professors, lawyers. I can do that because I understand the language, because I understand their value. I understand their identity and therefore their language and how to communicate. All right? So, quick recap military and ex military, 
where we go through, all those sub-tribes, what's intrinsically inside critically important to us, in my opinion, is our value and our, our identity. Now, we don't have value to our communities and our countries. If you watch us in the media and you talk to people in the community. And we have no value because of our identity and the tribe that we belong to. Why? Every news report, media report about post-matter stress disorder, it's all awareness, it's a merry-go-round conversation. It has been since World War I. Now, this is a hard discussion to have, but it's an honest one. What value do we give to our civilian communities now for being in the army, for being in the armed forces? What value do they see for them? For family out there that's just doing normal stuff. What value is there to have an armed force? However, you look what happens when there's a natural disaster and the armed forces turn up. There's an expectation of victory because now of our tribe and our identity, we now have value in our communities. Which is why one of the strategies I learned really, really early on, which created a huge amount of conflict within my own veteran community, was learning to become a businessman. Yeah? Why? Because I've found that all of our skill sets that we have from our tribe they have huge value here in the civilian world. But there's a few blocks that I'll take you through on the program. So once you leave, you're no longer part of that tribe. And the mission that you have generally sucks. Yeah? It's not as cool, it's not as flashy, doesn't give you your intrinsic drive. Yeah? And one of those pathways into security, I've been there, sitting on a plastic chair next to open sewage, absolutely no value. Yeah? I've been in and amongst people that look down their nose at me because my financial value didn't match their financial value. My identity of someone being almost broke, almost bankrupt, my identity removed my value for them in that space. And when I spun everything else around and I learned that you define your value and how to do that, things changed. So what we're dealing with now are veterans in critical need and ex-military personnel and anyone that's suicidal in critical need I found that value and identity are huge parts of that, and especially the language. Now, I've spoken to a lot of people that have been suicidal as a police officer and in my role at the moment. And when I speak their language back to them and I see an expectation of beating it and I give them a plan, and that plan might include speaking to a specialist so they get that specialist um, assistance, they're in there. Why? It's their process, it's their language. Why? Because it reminds them of their tribe. If you remind them of their tribe and speak the language of the tribe, they get that identity back. One of my mates that was going through some hard stuff, I said, brother, you're an infantryman, you'll beat this. I don't know how yet. Well, never do I, but I know one thing for sure. We'll beat it. Why? Because we're soldiers. <laughs> we're training for victory. And then working together and we put the plan together, I have total faith that he can do it. Now they're playing drums out the back. I might use that for the soundtrack. See how we go. All right. Unless we can give that back to our people, our core identity is going to go against us. We need to link these two back together. Everything that I do has been creating missions in this tribe's language, as many tribes' language as I can within their culture so that they're reminded of the identity that they love. And then I give them a mission. When you see the rest of these videos and programs coming out, I'm looking for people that want to come on a mission to win. When you're ready. If you've been through stuff and you've beaten it like I have, put your hand up, we'll get out there and help some other people along this journey. They can define where they are. But until I can talk to you about that, I need to, like I said at the start, give you the map on how that's working for assistance at the moment. Alright, so another sort of long winded one, but I'm passionate about this because when you link it all together, it works. No matter how much infighting there is amongst us, if there's a man down in the field, we'll all group up, someone will take the lead, we'll smack the crap out of it, come out for a mission, and we'll do it. And when we first arrive, there's no discussions on if we can do it, can we do it or not. We're here to achieve this. What's the situation? What's the mission? What's the execution general outline? What's our concept of ops? 
What admin log do we need? And what's our command in six? Get it done. Yet in the space that we're doing is talking around in circles and the people that are contributing to it and making decisions, they're not from our tribe. So they have no value to us. And that's what's happening with the psychs and the clinicians. That's why there's this big gap. But now that I'm working with psychs and clinicians, they have a huge amount of value to me. Why? Because they have the skill set that can help my tribe. So all I had to do was learn to speak their language, find out what they value, give that to them. And funny enough, it's the same as us. They want to win. So when you can combine a group of people that want to win from lots of different backgrounds on a common focus, and you point the direction, you set the tasks, we get it done. All right? That's what we're doing. I don't care what unit you're from. I don't care what flipping force you're from. I don't care what country you're from. If you want to join this mission of beating PTSD, stopping veteran suicide, you need to understand this stuff. If you're doing your own thing, great. Use this as an overlay to make sure you're ticking all those boxes. Because we're losing. I've lost guys. You've lost guys and girls. We're still responding to people. And if we get this bit right, then we get them from that critical space into that ERB where they're safe, and we can then get into the training side. And when they get through that, they can volunteer for this mission and do exactly what we're all doing. It's got to start with an expectation of victory. All right? Pissed off now. So, sorry about that. I'm not even going to edit that. I'll just flip and leave it as it is. Say what you want. All right? And it's a winner. We can beat it.